What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna install a Navitas AC system from Plum Quick. This right here Yamaha currently does 16 to 17 miles per hour max. And well, we're wanting to give it some more security, more torque and speed, along with some adjustability. So that's exactly what we're gonna do on today's video. Stay tuned. So like I previously mentioned, we got all of this right here packaged from Plum Quick. Plum Quick now has a online store so you can order any of the parts at any time of the day or night. Come to our first box here. Shows the Navitas box. Let's go ahead and open this right here up. Now inside this box, we have some more foam. We have the AC controller. We have the kit here. Now in this kit, it's gonna include a heavy duty cable here. It's gonna come with the AC motor adapter harness. We have some hardware to mount the controller to the plate. We have a ring terminal. This is gonna be the OTF. And this is going to be the mounting plate here. This is going to be your motor and the motor accessories. These are the phase cable covers here for the terminals on the motor. Some more hardware to mount the motor to the rear end. We got some ring hooks here to help us pick the motor up. This is the motor we're going to be installing on today's video. Now back in the day when I made these videos before, I would usually break the golf cart down, remove the top, remove the back seat, remove the body. I've had some people reach out to me and say, hey, do I have to do this or do I have to do that? So in today's video, I'm gonna leave this golf cart pretty much the way it is. And we'll see if we can work around the back seat and the body and everything. Now to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the key is in the off position. The brake is locked down and the tow run switch is in the tow mode. Next thing I've done is remove the main positive going to the golf cart solenoid from the battery itself. Now in order to remove the cables here from the controller, these bolts and nuts here is gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and 10 millimeter wrench. Along with the three bolts holding the controller to the golf cart, they will take a 10 millimeter socket as well. Now this is what the plug looks like from the controller. Only thing I had to do was press down on this back tab and pull away from the controller. It came free. Went ahead and removed the power ground and the A1 cables from the controller itself, along with the F1 and F2 cables. Next thing we're doing here is removing the three bolts holding the controller to the golf cart. I've already removed one here. It takes a 10 millimeter socket. There's one on the driver's side, two on the passenger side. Next you have that bolt off, go ahead and pull the controller up and out of place. Now for mounting the controller on this golf cart here, this is the plate. This is the orientation we're gonna to use to mount it with here. This right here, one bolt hole down here is gonna be at the very bottom. Notice right here at the top, there's nothing there. And on the G29, we're gonna use this hole right here, along with this hole and that hole there to mount to the golf cart itself. And once we have that mounted with the included hardware here, then we'll use this other hardware right here along with some washers to mount the controller to this top two and this bottom two holes there. And those are already pre-threaded and tapped for the controller to mount there. Now, once you get the plate mounted to the golf cart frame itself with the included hardware, we're gonna use a stubby Phillips head screwdriver to tighten those three bolts down. Now, those three bolts are fully secure and the plate is now mounted. Now the plate is installed. Now if you have a Yamaha G29, you only need to use three out of the four bolts included to mount the plate in this side of the instructions. It clearly says Yamaha G29 up here. But if you have the Yamaha YDRE, you're gonna use all four bolts to mount it and it shows you here on the back side which locations to mount the controller plate with there. Now in order to mount the controller, it's gonna come with all the hardware you need. It has four bolts, four lock washers, and four regular washers. You can either use a 5 16th socket or eight millimeter to use to mount the controller to the adapter plate. Now on this video, we're gonna use everything that comes with the kit to install everything on this golf cart, except one thing here. Notice this right here, power wire, this is a six gauge cable going from the stock solenoid to the old controller. I'm gonna replace this with a little bit longer one that goes to the positive here on the controller. Now the positive, the negative, and the three phase cables going to the controller here. These right here are gonna take a 10 millimeter socket. 
If you're going to replace this power wire here on the solenoid, this is going to take a 13 millimeter socket to remove that as well. So we're looking at the back side of the controller here. This bolt is going into the frame here through a strap. That strap is holding all the wires from the stock OEM motor along with the ground wire going to the batteries itself. This is going to take a 12 millimeter socket to remove that right air bolt so you can gain access to all of those wires. Now, once you have this right here strap removed, you see this right here split loom coming up. You have this right here cable that's going to the negative battery pack. It's automatically attached to this ring terminal. That's also attached to this black wire here going down to the motor. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these you cut. You're going to have to cut one of these and crimp on the included ring terminal from the kit here. We're going to use this ground wire going to the controller itself. We're going to use this black wire that's going to the motor separately. Then you're going to also use this white wire here for another phase cable. You're also going to use the green cable that's included with the kit for a phase cable as well. Now this green and black small cable here is not going to be used for anything on the Navitas install. Now I'm going to clip off the cable that's going to the battery pack itself. I'm going to clip it off right here. We'll strip it back and put that new ring terminal on this cable here. I'm going to use black electrical tape here just to cover this right here section of this cable up. And there you have it. This right here is going to be a phase cable. This white cable is going to be a phase cable. And the included green cable is also going to be a phase cable going from the controller to the motor. Next thing we need to do is come on over here, strip this right here wire back a little bit, crimp on the new ring terminal that was included with the kit. So we can go ahead and use this right here as our main negative for the controller. Now here is the piece of insulation we strip back. I used a pair of regular strippers to do it with. If you don't have those strippers, you can grab a razor blade, score on the outside, and then down from the center to the exiting portion of the cable to remove it off as well. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the included ring terminal from the kit here, place it on to the cable itself and crimp it into place. There it is, that's done. We're gonna now attach this to the negative of the controller input. It's gonna take a 10 millimeter socket for that bolt on there. Now the next thing we need to do is hook up these phase cables here. We're gonna use the stock white one and the stock black one as well. And we're gonna use the included green one in the kit. That being said, you're gonna have W, V, and U on the controller. You're gonna have W, V, U on the motor. It doesn't matter where white or black or green goes to, as long as the W on the controller matches the W on the motor, the V of the controller matches the V on the motor, and the U of the controller matches the U of the motor itself. There's also gonna be a bolt down here that says R. We're not gonna use that in this application. Now we're almost done with the controller itself. We only need to do three plugs. The main plug plugs into the bottom of the controller itself from the golf cart. You have the OTF harness and controller here. It has an eight pin plug on it. You cannot get that confused with the motor pigtail that's also included in the kit because it has a 10 pin harness. Now after you have your OTF plugged into your controller, you wanna make sure to mount your OTF in the location where you can access the lock feature here. And once you set all of your controls, you can lock it. So this is a shot from the rear of the golf cart underneath the back seat. All three phase cables are connected. The main power wire is connected. The main ground wire is connected. On the bottom of the Navitas there is where your main harness comes into play. That's where it plugs in. It actually has a vertical plug. The plug on the left there with the white tape around that wire there. That's going to be for the motor pigtail. And we're on the right with the yellow writing or the yellow piece of uh, tape on there. That's going to be for the OTF controller. The controller itself is now fully installed and hooked up. Now this is the 4KW. This is not the 5KW motor, but it's still heavy. And I still would suggest putting those hooks on there to grab it and uh, give you better points to lift it out 
of the box itself and onto the golf cart. I'm using a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench to remove the hardware from the motor and the rear end itself. All right, I believe I have all the hardware loosened from the motor itself. Usually some of these motors take four bolts. I believe this one only had three in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try to remove the motor and shift it towards the passenger side of the golf cart and then towards the front of the golf cart through the swing arm. I'm gonna try to lower it down. Probably best to jack the golf cart up too as well. There it is, the motor's now out. That worked pretty simple. All right guys, installing the motor may be a little bit more difficult than the way we removed it. However, once we get it in place and onto the shaft itself, we may have to clock the motor because of this spring on the passenger side and the harness output coming on the back of the motor. Just note that when we're going back in, went ahead and moved all of my wires out the way so they won't get in the way of this install. This Navitas motor is heavy and if you can do it my way or this way, you wanna be sure to take your time, maybe even have a buddy help you out as well. Can you come down a little bit, a little bit more? All right, pull up. All right, can you pull up some more? Pull up some more. Pull on, Bubba. Hold on, hold on. Just do not drop it on me, please. Pull. Keep pulling. Can you pull some more? Come on, son. Huh? Hold on a second. Boy. Hold it right there. Can you hold it? If you can't hold it, just let me know. All right. Can I let go? Yeah. You sure? Yes. All right, so here's the deal. The bolts that are included with the motor are one and a quarter inch, quarter 20 bolts. I went to the hardware store, I got two of them at one inch long, put one in the far back back here and one in the bottom. The bolt that's going in the top and the front is the inch and a quarter bolt. The one in the very back and the very bottom, take your time, maybe even take a break when you're going to install those, they will go in but it's a little tricky. I'm just letting you know up front. Next thing we need to do is put the phase cables on and uh, hook up the cable that goes to the uh, controller from the motor itself and we'll be done. So this is a motor phase cover here. One side goes over the cable going to the controller and the other side goes over the motor cable itself. So. We're going to slide the controller cable through this side here and up here and then once we attach it to the controller we'll actually open this right here up and cover the cable that's going into the motor itself so us putting this right here boot over this green cable and those other two cables and a split here we can slide it over and cover it just like that and we're done i might just go put some zip ties over these three right here on this side just to keep it clean there. I am gonna have to zip tie this green wire here. Next we're gonna just plug up those two uh, connectors on the end of the motor to the controller as well. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is download the Davidas app from either the Play Store or the App Store. Once you have it downloaded, it's gonna look like this right here, white with the letter N. Once you pull it up for the first time, it'll show you some serial numbers over here. Ours is gonna be the very top one. The 
first screen you're going to come to is the dashboard. You have your motor temp, your battery voltage. You have this little green lock down here is unlocked. If you hit the green lock, it'll say tap to unlock. You can leave the key in the ignition just like this right here and go somewhere and no one can take this golf cart with turning the key on or off because the controller is locked. So this is a security feature here. To unlock it, you just tap it. Once it shows the little green uh, key down there, you're good to go. Now it says waiting for key. Right now the key is off. If I turn it on, it says waiting for foot switch. It's in F for Ford on a Yamaha. I'm gonna put it in reverse or Ford. I'm gonna turn the key back off. So it says waiting for key. At the top right, it shows you a battery voltage. These are lead acid batteries, a used set of batteries at that. They're not in best shape, but this is fully charged pack with like one bad battery on the pack. So a good pack of batteries is recommended for peak performance on the Navitas. You do not have to have lithium, but is recommended. Next screen we're gonna go to is the diagnostic screen. It says key in as an off. If we turn the key on, it'll turn to on. The run tow input is on run. The charger interlock is not connected. If we plug the charger in, it says connected. See that? I just unplugged it. The forward switch is on. If I hit the reverse switch on, those change. You have your throttle inputs. We can go ahead and hit the throttle input. Let's go ahead and calibrate the throttle here. Once you put the golf cart in on mode on the Yamaha, it does not have a neutral, it just has forward or reverse. So you're gonna have to press this green lock button down here to calibrate the throttle. And once you calibrate the throttle here, you can press the accelerator pedal and the cart will not go. So we're gonna hit start calibration. Now we're gonna press the acceleration pedal all the way down and just hold it for the 10 seconds. We can go ahead and let off now. It shows you your 0% throttle volts is. It shows you recommended changing it to 0.51. It shows 100% throttle volts is 3.51. It says recommend changing it to 3.48. So we're gonna go ahead and accept and save. Let it save and do its thing. Okay, everything is set there. We're gonna go ahead and exit the calibrate throttle screen. Now we're gonna to need to go back to dashboard and we need to untap the lock here. Or make sure it's green at the bottom left. The reason it was red there is because while we were calibrating it, we wanted to make sure that the golf cart would not move during the calibration settings. Another thing to look at here is the OTF key switch. It is unlocked. And if we change the parameters of the OTF forge speed and bring it down, it shows on the app there. And I'm adjusting this with the OTF speed knob. We can do the same thing with region, turn it up. We can turn the acceleration down. So all of this is real time working with the app and the OTF. So you have a profile number. It's the Yamaha G29 600 amp, four kilowatt Navitas. Firmware revision is 8.021. And the app version is 37.1. And we go over here to settings. It's gonna automatically come at 25 miles per hour. And the tire diameter is gonna be 18. Now these tires on this golf cart are 23. So we're gonna just select right here we're gonna delete those. We're gonna add 23, hit done. Once you get all the way done with that, come all the way to the bottom, you can hit save. Hit yes to save changes. Once this is done saving changes, we're gonna turn the golf cart off and back on. And then once you go to dashboard and come back to settings, it's already changed there at 23. Now, if you wanted to change the forward speed limit, you would just tap it, delete it, put your number in there, hit done, 
You're going to have to accept this right here. You're going to have to come all the way to the very bottom and hit save. Save changes, yes. Once it's done doing its thing, we're going to turn the golf cart off and back on and do a power cycle. That way when you go to your dashboard and you go back to your settings, it's still changed as well. Now, just because you can change the speed limit there does not mean that you can put 100 and your golf cart will go 100. It's still limited to the performance of the motor controller and the batteries that's in the golf cart. I like to keep my reverse speed limit about the same here. Six miles per hour is more than enough to go in reverse. Now, we're back at the dashboard here. We're going to click the three lines at the top left. We're going to come in here to controller firmware. Right now, the present software version is 8.021 Yamaha G29 600 amp 4 kilowatt Navitas. We're going to come down here to the Yamaha G29 600 amp 4 kilowatt version 10.021. We're going to click that. Yes, we want to download a new firmware. This right here is probably going to take between 5 and 10 minutes to fully download. Once it fully downloads, you can go ahead and follow the directions. So now we've updated the firmware. It shows present software version is 10.021 now. The windshield is fogged from the air conditioner in the shop. Same as with the wheels there as well. Let's take this thing for a rip around the neighborhood. All right, guys. Well, it looks like we are now done with the install. If you made it this far, I want to tell you thank you. The last thing we need to do with the golf cart now is to rip it and have some fun. But with that being said, you know, having a golf cart is fun. Upgrading a golf cart is a blast. Ripping it with your buddies, so much fun. Be careful with these modification guys. Do not get hurt and do not do anything stupid. That being said, appreciate you watching today's video, and until next time, we'll see y'all later.